Welcome to Lorna's Cooking. I'm Lorna. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and the bell. I'm going to sift all of my dry ingredients together. Now, you don't have to do this. I like to do it because I want to make sure that there's no lumps or anything that didn't uh, mix well once I make the dough. So I just put everything in together. And you see there's a little bit that's left that I try to get out. It's really easy to do. You don't have to sift everything together like I did. You can just put everything in a bowl and mix it and that should be fine. But I just like to do it because as you saw, there are sometimes little pieces of either baking soda or baking powder flour that just didn't dissolve. Now that I have all of my dry ingredients, they've been sifted together, I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to grate my butter. The reason I grate the butter is that it gets really nice small pieces and it's easier to incorporate into the flour mixture. I did freeze the butter for about 15 minutes just so that it stays hard. and. I'll grate it on the larger grating side, as you see, this is the side. And as you see, the butter grates really nicely. And once that's done, I'm going to mix it into the flour mixture. Try to move quickly so the butter doesn't melt because you want the butter to stay as cold as possible. Now that I have just this little bitty piece of butter, I'm just going to put that in and I'll break that up if I need to. Make sure you get all of the butter out of the grater because as you see, it gets stuck in there. I'm going to mix the butter into the flour. I'm going to mix the butter into the flour and just coating the butter pieces really is what I'm doing. But I don't want a bunch of big clumps of butter and flour so I'm squeezing a little bit to try to get the pieces to be small. I really want the pieces to be pea size or just kind of like crumbles. So I'm kind of mixing things around, picking it up, squeezing it a little bit, trying to make sure I don't melt the butter. It's important to try to keep the butter as cold as possible. That helps when you make the layers and when it melts you have nice melted layers in the biscuits. Okay so I think that's good enough. I'm going to pour a cup of the buttermilk into the center of the flour. I'm going to fold it in until all of the flour is wet. The dough should be a wet dough, not a dry dough. So, so I have extra buttermilk 
just in case. I'm gonna need some more buttermilk. So that's an extra one fourth cup I just added. The dough should be tacky or kind of sticky. So this looks really good. Next, I'm going to just roll it out. You don't have to roll it out with a rolling pin like I'm going to do. You can usually just pat it and use your hands, but I like using the weight of the rolling pin to get things like I want. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my surface. And you kind of try to put it, I'm making it into somewhat of a ball a little bit. Press it down. Put a little flour on my rolling pin. Again, you don't have to use a rolling pin. I just do because I like the weight of the rolling pin. And I'm going to put a little bit of flour on top, not too much. So I'm going to roll. And you want to roll it about three fourths of an inch. You kind of guess what it, you know, three fourths of an inch. And then I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to turn it a little bit more flour. And I'm just gently pressing down with my rolling pin. in a rectangle. Okay, then I'm going to fold it again. I want to fold it one more time. This is how you get the layers in the biscuits, is all of the folding. And then this last time, this last time I'm going to cut out the biscuits and cook them. If you don't use a rolling pin and use your hands, just make sure that your hands are floured really well. And I'm using a small cookie cutter, a round shape. You can actually cut the dough with a sharp knife. Just make sure you just go straight up and straight down. Or you can use a larger round if you have them. So, I'm actually going to put a little bit of flour, putting a little bit of flour on the cookie cutter so it doesn't stick when I press down. Do not twist when you do this. You go straight down, and if you want to shake it a little bit back and forth, up and down, that's fine, but don't twist. That will make it so that it seals the edges of the biscuits when you cook, so you don't want to. So you just do that. I place the biscuits on a sheet 
a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. And I'll make sure that they're touching because that actually helps them rise as well. Okay, so what you do with the dough that you have left, you just gather it together, put a little bit more, and we're going to make more biscuits with this. You want to cook all of the dough, even if it ends up a funny shape, <laughs> it'll just be a funny shape biscuit. A little and then cut some more Gather it the dough one more time. Okay, so this is going to be my last little biscuit. It's going to be kind of a strange shape, but it'll still be delicious. I still try to cut it to get the sharp edges. And I put this little bitty scraps on top of that one. So here are the biscuits ready to go. I'm going to put it in an oven for about 15-20 minutes and then I'm going to breast the tops with a little butter. This is how the biscuits look after cooking for 15 minutes. So as you can see, they need a little bit more time. An easy way to spread melted butter on top of your warm biscuits is to take a teaspoon like this one and put a little bit of butter in there and then spread it in a circular motion and then it's done. The other way to mix up the dough for the biscuits would be stirring it up with a spoon. So what I did was the same thing I did with the hand method, which is mix everything together, all the dry ingredients, and then I, I grated my butter and then I put it in the flour. I made a well in the middle of the dry mixture and the butter that I uh, mixed together. I pour the milk in the middle of the flour and butter mixture. And then I just take a wooden spoon. Now if you don't have a wooden spoon you can use hmm, a plastic spoon or whatever other kind of spoon that you have. But just 
mix it around until the flour and the butter is well coated and kind of wet. Once everything is mixed, it's a sticky kind of dough, but you want to make sure that you still don't over mix it. After I finished mixing up the dough, I made sure I scraped everything out of the bowl and off of the spoon. So you want to make sure you get all of the dough so nothing's wasted. Then I floured my surface and I put my dough there. I'm going to use a method I talked about earlier, which is patting the dough down with the hands instead of using a rolling pin. So I put a little bit of flour on the surface so my hands won't just totally stick to the dough or the dough won't stick to my hand. And I press the dough down. Use a little bit more flour because your hands will get really sticky. But try not to use too much flour if you're going to do this method because you don't want your dough to be too dried out. So once I've patted it down, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the dough when I rolled it out, which is I'm going to take the dough and fold it over. And I'll put a little bit more flour. And I'm going to pat it down again. I'm going to do this a few more times so I can get nice flaky layers. I just wanted to show you all how to do it with your hands instead of the rolling pin. So this is what the dough looks like after I patted it down until I got a rectangle. Now I did use both of my hands to do this. It's just easier to pat it down with both hands. I'm going to use a knife this time to cut the biscuits because not everybody has biscuit cutters or cookie cutters and these still make really nice looking biscuits. So I just make sure that I have a little bit of flour on the tip of my knife and I go straight down just like I said with the cookie cutter. Make sure you don't move your knife around, you just up and down with the knife and you might need I put the biscuits on the tray. Well, I'm going to call them my baby biscuits because I cut them kind of small. But I still let them touch because that helps the rise. They'll kind of rise up against each other, just like I did with the other biscuits. And then I'll show you how they come out. See, both methods work great. I hope you try the recipe and let me know in the comments if you do. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Take care.